Infantile spasms are a different special type of seizure. They can be sudden jerks, startles, stares, with sometimes associated with a cry, but very sudden and repetitive. They'll happen over and over and over again. Um, and they're a type of seizure that the whole brain is involved all at once. Infantile spasms are a kind of epileptic encephalopathy. So they occur in babies. They look like a head going down, arms up often. Sometimes they're followed by a cry. Sometimes the child is sleepy afterwards. They can occur in clusters. They more often occur in clusters both at the beginning of sleep and at the end of sleep. The child's bothered by them and they're often associated with regression. It's, it's hard to differentiate. Some of the kids just look like they have colic and they're sort of burping or spitting up. In infantile spasms, there's the cry associated with it. They're quick. They get worse. So it doesn't get better. They don't, they're not associated with eating necessarily. It's more with going into and out of sleep. And the child really regresses with them. And the arms go up. So a lot of times it's helpful to make a video and to show it to your um, provider so that you can see is it really spasms or is it colic. Infantile spasms are best diagnosed with an EEG. Really the best is a video EEG, but the most important is to capture the episode. So a normal EEG is a, what's called an organized EEG. So it has nice little waves that are consistent and seem to go on forever in a nice organized fashion. But someone with infantile spasms will have bursts of high voltage, sharp and spike activity. It'll look very chaotic and very disorganized and then it can flatten out and then it will burst again and then it will flatten out. So that's called hypsarrhythmia, which means chaos in Latin. And so that's what an abnormal EEG looks like. About 30% of infantile spasms are idiopathic, which means that we just can't figure out what causes them. As our genetic testing gets better, probably most of those idiopathic ones will turn out to have a genetic component. The biggest cause of infantile spasms is something called tuberous sclerosis. So tuberous sclerosis is one of the neurocutaneous disorders. The brain and the skin are formed at the same time. So kids with tuberous sclerosis will often have birthmarks, light patches or um, rough skin patches often on their faces. And they can have scars on their brain, tubers in their brain, as well as seizures, as well as, as intellectual disabilities. So that's the biggest cause. It can also be caused by any kind of lack of oxygen to the brain. It can be caused by migrational abnormalities. So there are things called lysencephaly or schizencephaly. The brain forms in layers during fetal development. And as each layer of the brain forms, there can be a disruption that causes it not to settle into the gyri and sulci that make these nice folds that you'll see on a brain MRI. So any disruption like that, any hypoxic ischemic event, which means lack of oxygen to the brain, certain genetic disorders can cause it or you know you can never find the reason. So successful treatment is based on three criteria. Cessation of the spasms, so no more spasms, um, normal development or as close to normal as you can get, and cleaned up EEG, so no hypsarrhythmia on the EEG. The risks if you don't treat infantile spasms are basically bad. It really affects learning, processing, development. Children who have uncontrolled infantile spasms have a high risk of mental retardation, cerebral palsy, so problems thinking, problems walking, problems doing things. So, you know, we need to treat it. We need to stop the seizures. If you don't stop the seizures, the brains aren't going to develop well. There's a bunch of different research projects going on. Most of it is on genetics, looking at why kids with infantile spasms have infantile spasms, and trying to predict which is the right medication for them. There's other research going on on what is the best treatment for infantile spasms, so there are some other new medications that are in the works, but they're not there out there for the mainstream just yet. If you suspect that your child has spasms, if there is any inclination that they're, these things that they're doing do not look like colic or you're, you just think it's odd, you need to go immediately to an emergency room, 
preferably one with an epilepsy center, and get admitted for a video EEG. You should not be calling the neurologist to make an appointment in three months. You should not be being told that it's, it's just colic and it'll go away. You have to be very forceful and aggressive and get the child admitted and do the video EEG overnight. If you're a parent and you see something that looks suspicious, whip out your phone, get a video camera, get a witness, all right, and record it. All right, and then go visit your pediatrician and discuss it. Don't panic yet because there are many times that patients come to us and they show us videos and they're not seizures. Thank goodness. Okay, but sometimes they are and we're happy about that because then we can get them the treatment right away. For our peers, the other medical practitioners out there, basically encourage your families to let you show you these videos. And if you're not sure what the videos are, then send them to us or a specialist and let us take a look at them and help us to evaluate your patient.